The Last Word with Stan Collymore is a brand new podcast coming at you every single Monday with lots of my opinion, big name guests and a little bit of fun too. Today we're here at the home of Liverpool Football Club. I was here 24 years ago as a fresh-faced young red. Who are we talking to today? It's the gaffer, Jurgen Klopp. A fantastic end to last season. Um, for, for our listeners, what is the key to preparation for any new season, and particular, particularly when you've won arguably the biggest trophy of them all? Where could I know that from? Because we never won the biggest trophy. <laughs> um, I, won, uh, yeah, it, it, I don't see it as a massive challenge. It, it depends, of course, to the, to the character mentality and mentality of the, of the players, of the team. So if I would guess uh, or imagine that they can't stop flying, in a in a not so good way, then then I yeah, then had have to intervene. But um, this team is not like this. This is um, I, it's the other way around. I really think um, that this team is rather now. Okay, it was a big relief for me because of losing a couple of final stuff like that. And but it was a, um, for sure a big relief for a, a lot of players, especially the players who are longer here. That everybody mm. was facing constantly questions. The, the the comparisons with the with the big ones in the past and stuff like that. But it's only one information. The other information is what you get. We were really good last season. We played a fantastic season and it was not a coincidence. Nobody thought it was a coincidence. Everybody saw that we improved, that um, there was a lot of hard work in it. And um, so and I, this team will invest again a lot. But that doesn't mean that we then will be better than last season. It only means um, there's no difference between the season be the seasons before and in, in, uh, if you think about the preseason. So if there are no differences in uh, uh, the way that you approach trophies, you want to, I would imagine, with the season ahead, want to approach everything. You know, you want to be as successful as you can. What are the key ingredients for you as a manager that you want to see, in, particularly in preseason, from your group of players? Like, look, the preseason is nowadays a, re a big challenge because the players coming back in completely different points. When I was a player, we came on the 1st of July, six and weeks And everybody was back. Yeah, everybody was back. Six weeks preseason, fantastic. We could work. We had ups and downs, ups and downs, and we trained so hard you couldn't, can't believe it. Or maybe you can't believe, but um, people out there are not. And um, so that's now one challenge. So we have to we have to do the physical work. There's no doubt about that. On the other hand side, we have to. We have, we, there were still um, um, things we have to improve, of course. Fluency, um, defending parts, uh, finishing parts, and creating chances and stuff like that. But uh, then it has, there are parts where we were really good, and I'm not sure the football team can. In moments you can do it better, but in general you cannot do it really better. Like we defend it in different moments, but then we have to do it again. And that's football is not like riding a bike. So you lose it over a summer, mm -hmm. <laughs> unfortunately. So you have to bring all these pieces together again. It's like the, the, the main thing or the message is not resting on the last season, but no building on it. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it's not our, it was not our final destination. It, um, that's how we felt it 100%. But of course we need to be ready again. And the preseason will be like a preseason. Eh? So putting a finger in the things we were not good, using the things we were good and all that stuff. Do a lot, work a lot, enjoy training, enjoy the physical work as well because you know what, why you're doing it for it and why you're doing it. And last year, the best example was then, of course, that winning at the last day of the whole season, the biggest final in, in world football, apart from the World Cup, obviously, um, and still being able to do it, it's only because of the preseason. And um, so that's why the boys are... How is that? They came with a smile to train. I saw, I saw some of the Instagram yeah, yesterday, yeah, yeah. high five in Virgil and yeah. Hendo back. Um, what are your aims this season? Without being specific, because we could say, well, you want to retain the Champions League, you want to win the Premier League, which you're going to get asked a million times. But again, what are the general aims? Is it improvement? Is it yeah. seeing players develop? Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. are the, what are the major aims but for that's it. But that's it. Playing the best football we can play, and that means that we have to we have to have to improve individually and as a team. And that's possible. So my example is always I, I really feel that James Milner made big steps. <laughs> that sounds not great since we are work together, but not because I'm in. But he made big steps with this team really in his. He was always a fantastic player, but how it's all coming together like in the right moment, all his skills, what he always had. Does that give you more satisfaction because he's a senior pro? In other words. You can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, you've got I know, a reputation I know. Of, of, of developing younger players. But does it give you satisfaction that James Milner 
has kicked on as a footballer. For me, I, I, I personally didn't have, I didn't need that pr to prove that. I knew it before, but probably not all, not all personalities can do that. But Millie was open for everything, and so it's such a wonderful professional. But it's only one example, and then you have, we have all the other players. They have so much space to improve, and improvement is always. It's not learning a new mm. trick. It's it's like bringing consistency in mm. the things you do. You have to start if you. Shape always drops from time to time. It's a wonderful moment, less of a wonderful moment, and all that stuff. But these these bounces you have to control, and mm -hmm. that you, that you know, it's not like whoop, what happened today, yeah? and and stuff. You shouldn't be surprised that you're good or surprised that today is you are not good and stuff like that. So that's all a part of a, a personal development and improvement, and that's what what we are working on. And there we have more players than eleven, eh? so means so there there will be internal challenges, fights for, for positions. Not always, because most of the time the guys who are fit play uh, because of the number of mm. games. But uh, there are games where everybody wants to play, but not everybody can play. And then dealing with that is another challenge. So there are a lot of challenges coming up. I'm looking forward to it, but no <coughs> season is like the other season. And the last one was wonderful, and we will, because of the last match, uh, last game of the season, we will remember it forever. At on plus, we had 97 points in, in the league. How did we come there? Because everybody took his role like he took the role. Not that he was asking for more at game time or whatever. They accepted it. I watch training. I'm, I'm, I'm really. I stand next to the door, open it. But the boys have to go through. Mm. And sometimes it was easy for them, and sometimes it was not that easy. But everybody was ready in the moment when he was needed, and that was a was unbelievable. To them. Philosophy. Everybody talk. Everybody now has to have a philosophy of of of, of playing. Um, which is a fairly modern phenomenon. Um, I went to Mainz last year, it might have been earlier last year, talking to Leon Balogun, that's now at Brighton. Um, and every, I wanted to talk to people behind the scenes. What was Jurgen Klopp like? What, and it, the, 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 the key words were, um, which mirror a lot of yours, support, family, uh, creating something where everybody was happy. And you could, that was a tangible feeling. Mainz is a relatively small club. You then go to Dortmund, you create a family environment, a feeling of everybody is a part of this. You then come to one of the world's biggest football clubs and you do the same. When I look at people's philosophies, a manager goes into the dressing room, here is my philosophy, and then he's a different person outside of the dressing room. Your football philosophy just seems to be an extension of who you are as a person. How do you manage that <laughs> in one of the most ruthless industries on the planet? I have no idea <laughs> to be 100% honest. It sounds like I'm a really selfish person because I've, I'm, I always create an atmosphere I like. <laughs> um, ah, I, I have really no idea. And, and thank God, I, I've had only three clubs. And I remember when Mike Gordon asked me, what's your philosophy and stuff like that in, in our first talk. And I said, Mike, if you would explain me now four hours baseball, I still wouldn't have a clue. So why I should explain to American my football philosophy? <laughs> Uh, he got the joke. But the key um, word, support, uh, empathy is a word that I've, yeah, I've yeah, watched yeah. a lot of your interviews and the words are the same. Empathise. If I can't do something, somebody else will help me to get to the answer. Is that those are all just common sense ideas. That isn't a specific, I want to play this way. Oh, yeah, yeah. And oh, human yeah, beings I, I, seem to respond to you. No, I have an idea of how I want to play football. And again, that's selfish because I, I want to play the football I like to see yeah <laughs> and then um, and I have a, an idea about how I want um, to yeah, come along with people treat people stuff like that easy let's really be be nice as often as you can and it's how life should be why we should meet each other and constantly are close to have an argument there's no reason for is that is that not difficult in, in a sport and in an industry though that that, that does have anger, that does have violence, that does have spite. It's part of the industry. And you seem to kind of like always be above that. You're always smiling above that. <laughs> I'm not always smiling, but I, I cannot take it too serious. So the thing is, the outside world, they may, may be like this. But when we close the doors here at Melwood, then we can be like we want. So and then we go out, yes, and we play football games, nothing else. So we don't have to be part of all these little fights. And sometimes out of from emotion, even I say something about another manager or another club or stuff like that. It makes not too much sense, but it happens because we have to face so many. We are normal people, and we, we sometimes we we feel the tension of the situation, sometimes not. But that's all. We are just 
we are just normal people a bit better in football like that uh, like others that that's all and um, we, we are fortunate enough that we really um, work for a club like Liverpool I have always understood it like this when I was a player it was easy for me to accept that I was only part of the team because I was only part of the team I was never the star of the player I was I, I was loved it to play with all these other guys and they became better and better and better and I stayed on the same average level so um, from from being kind of supportive to not disturbing at the end of my career uh, I, bec I became the new role as a manager overnight and for me it was a paradise because now I could be part of this football team without disturbing with my football skills it was fantastic and, and I, re I really loved it from the first second and that's how now is it I, I love having these boys around having these boys around and and seeing all the skills they have and and, and doing my job to yeah, to make the most of it that's how my, 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 my job was always, even when I was a player, because I was only on the right flank or up front and, and, and couldn't really help, apart from a few things I was quite good in. Only a couple more questions. It's, it's fascinating. Thank you for your, for your candour. That's, that's the kind of thing we want our listeners to, to be able to get from, from, from key people like you. Football is now 24-7. The demands are greater than ever. How do you relax? Better and better and better. It was very difficult in the beginning. Very, very difficult. Uh, young manager, very busy, very, very busy. Uh, we had lesser games, obviously, because we never played um, European. It was completely different, actually, job to do. But I watched, I think, I, I, I always, I get this question asked sometimes, and I think about it, and the number in my mind that differs, but it's, I think it's between five and 10,000 games without being involved in them, only to learn the game, to understand what happens, different systems, all that stuff from all over the world. I had never time to, to, to um, make a trainee program with um, um, another manager because I was immediately in the job and never, never left the job pretty much. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, what, um, that's how it started. Meanwhile, the things I did 20 years ago by myself, I have now around about 25 people for. So I have time to relax from so time to time. So you delegate better. Oh, much more, much more. It's completely different. Yeah? So it's completely different. And I love that a lot. But holiday was now four weeks. Um, Did you relax? Very, very often. My wife thinks that's not true because when I get up, I, 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 I read football and stuff like that. But I'm not involved. It's like I, I read it like a football supporter. So it's like, wow, they really buy him. Um, and stuff like that. So I, I read the transfer rumors and stuff like that. And the funny thing with that is if you're involved, so if somebody tells any, says anything about Liverpool, you think, oh, come on, nil point nil. But it's about oh. United or City. You think, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you're a fan. <laughs> a clear Which I'm is a fan. fantastic, and that's yeah. obvious. Um, <laughs> one piece of advice you would give to an aspiring young manager? Uh, yeah, really. Learn football. Because it's, it's not so difficult. We don't talk about rocket science. Mm. But um, to un the, the, only, the only thing what really can happen if you're a good guy and uh, to do a training session. I don't say it's easy, but it's not. You can learn that. But the rest, the, the game understanding and stuff, really, you have to, nobody can tell you. You have to do it by yourself. So I did it with watching thousands of games. And, but that's what you actually have to do. Because there are so many questions from the players coming and you have to convince them. If you sell your idea like a kind of or a maybe or a probably you will lose the game in a second uh, the, the team in a second so you have to bring the players behind you that's only possible with with all the answers um that you can give all the answers a, a player um could ask for and um yeah that's the job to do learn football finally what are the hopes and aspirations for the 2019 2020 season ahead what kind of what what, what aspirations what do you hope for oh the best season we ever played. That's the plan. Actually, I even know it's been there, but because the plan every year, but it is the plan because there's always space, and um, it can be more points. It's difficult, but be more successful. It's difficult as well, but possible. So we should try it, or at least doing the same again. Stuff like that, having incredible games, really creating memories again for the rest of your life. We had that again. It's a Barcelona game. If we wouldn't have won a Champions League, okay, but not exactly the same memory, but still in 20 years to look back and think, wow, that game was really special. Creating moments like this um, for all of us, that's the, that's the aim and um, that's what we are going for. Jürgen, you're looking tanned, you're looking healthy, <laughs> you're looking ready. Thank I you very much. I hope beyond hope that you have a great <laughs> and successful season. Thank yeah. you for joining me. See you at Villa. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Jürgen, yeah. fantastic, thank you.